Alright, what is up? It's the first well, one. First episode <laughs> of Pain Has <laughs> Purpose, PHP Podcast. My name is Matthew Blaze. I'm with my boy Trey Moon. Um, go ahead and introduce yourself, introduce yourself bro. Yeah, so I'm, my name's Dylan Calhoun, but uh make music and uh, have the stage name Trey Moon, so... You can find him on Spotify, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> find me on anything, streaming, anything. whatever your Drop preference. Drop some fire, fire music. Um, we are starting up our fresh new journey of podcasting. Uh, me and Trey have both wanted to do this for a long time. And uh, honestly, just haven't gotten around to it. Haven't been uh, consistent. Uh, <laughs> haven't had somebody else willing to exactly go through it as well. Um. So it's going to be a brand new journey for us as well going into this new year. And uh, that's actually what this whole episode is going to be about is new year, new me, uh, how we can do better, how we can grow this year, um, what we can learn from last year and move on. And uh, one of the big things for us that we really wanted to do was a podcast. So uh, hold on, hold tight. It's going to be rough probably these first couple of episodes until we get the hang of this thing. Um, yeah, first one I've ever recorded. So <laughs> yeah, so we'll see. Be forgiving, please. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, hopefully, we roll out uh, some good content, uh, some good motivational stuff. Not just help us grow as humans, but also you as well as you tune in and listen to us cut up and give some advice and everything. And we want everybody along for the ride. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, let's roll into this thing. Let's get it going. Um, what is what is something you want to focus on this year? Or uh, let's let's talk about the podcast first. Actually, like what what do you see this hopefully becoming? Honestly, short term and long term. Like, what do you want to see it look like in two months, and then also like at the end of this year, at the end twenty twenty two. I think in the beginning. I mean, I'm happy with progress. So it's like, uh -huh. if we can start this thing, get it going figure it out and get it to like a mainstream concept I think in two months maybe have like a very polished podcast and good episodes that kind of dive into just just things that matter honestly yeah. and I think in the long run I don't know I mean like as far as like a goal I mean I'd say you know making some type of money from it or mm -hmm. being able to financially you know keep doing it yeah. right so yeah. it's like you get to a point where <clears throat> you're getting you know some type of money or pay but yeah. it gets to a point where it's like okay like i can keep doing this now yeah. <laughs> like getting i can kind of reward i can dedicate you're putting yeah, yeah i can yeah. dedicate time yeah. to it yeah you gotta and be I an think, open book like every everything we do on this earth is for some, some kind of reward right whether that right. be money or like impacting someone's life like there's got to be a give and a take so yeah absolutely we uh hopefully what do you, what do you want from this you want to <laughs> honestly i mean obviously money's great that i don't think that was ever the first intention with this thing it was more, right more of a uh honestly a venting like as long as i can die one day and say that like there were lives affected like I wasn't afraid to speak my truth and speak who I am and that helped somebody else right however way that was like then I I'm good you know if if exactly. somebody messages me after this episode airs and be like Matt that was a great episode <laughs> like what you said really helped like, yeah like, that's the that's, whole purpose that's, that's that's good with me that's it right there that's honestly like the best thing that I could get from it is that right exactly there. so I yeah I um I think one of the things with podcasts too is like you got to be so vulnerable because it's like mm -hmm. that's what a podcast is it's like you got to be <clears throat> people are gonna take like they're tuning into your podcast to get some type of input or you know some type of value of what you mm -hmm. have to say it's like listening into a conversation while you're eavesdropping but it's yeah. like it's more of like a purpose. It's not like a casual conversation, but absolutely. I love that I mean, you brought up the word <laughs> vulnerability. Like yeah. that is 
That is like the biggest struggle. <laughs> like, oh, that's the that's, that's the hard. That's the number one struggle in the world. But it's also like the most rewarding as well. Like, yeah. If you're willing to be vulnerable, then like there is so much growth in that, and there's so many people that need to see that too. Right, and and that's the thing too. It's like, especially in art, like you know, being an artist, vulnerability is like the key like that's how you acquire fans that's how you keep fans mm -hmm. and that's how you basically get your message across yeah because like when you're listening to music i mean you can you can feel like there's certain songs where you can feel the emotion and it's different yeah and it's like i feel like he is saying this like through his heart and mm -hmm. it's not just like Oh, he's probably just reading off a piece of paper or yeah. like somebody wrote this or blah, blah, blah. It's like when you can portray yourself, you know, if you're writing the music or if you're taking a song that was written mm -hmm. and you're able to put yourself in there, it's like acting. It's like yeah. you can't be a good actor unless, you know, you're full of emotion and like authenticity, I guess. <laughs> what is authenticity, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as long you're as you're authentic artist. Yeah, as yeah. long as you're authentic, it's like, yeah. that's what, you know, sets everybody apart because uh -huh. it's like, wow, that guy right there is putting his heart on his sleeve and it's so easy for people to judge it because it's like, oh, wow, that dude's crying, like he looks like an idiot or blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But it's like, once you get past the judgment of what people think, I think that's the, that's like the threshold step where it's like, okay, yeah. like I can do, start doing this now. I can, I can, I can unleash now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, as long as I can get past yeah. like all the crap yeah. and stuff that people think or you might think that they're thinking, it's yeah. like. I love that we can bounce this off of each other, right? Because you have that experience with music, like being vulnerable in your music. Yeah. I have that experience in TikTok. Like, yeah exactly Bro. <laughs> tiktok is ruthless <laughs> they will like you talk about a difficult place to be and i'm sure you get the same thing in music right it's like it's difficult to put that down and like be vulnerable but like tiktok is like the same way like if you if you're vulnerable on that app like you're going to have some people <laughs> praise you like right. some people come along and they're like oh that's so amazing thank you so much like that really helped me and then there's other people like you're such a poon like yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's it's ruthless, but that's like social media in general, like yeah. not just TikTok or music, like across the board, social media is ruthless, and it's because it's so easy. People yeah. can be ruthless from behind a screen yeah. and have no consequence or punishment. There's no consequence. You just yeah, you're just yeah. posting, and it's yeah. I mean, social media is man, it's a great thing, but there's a lot of baggage that yeah. comes with it. Yeah. And it's it's hard to get through that baggage whenever you're trying to be successful or trying to push through that barrier of like putting content out. Yeah. And just the whole vulnerability vulnerabil vulnerability <laughs> thing. <laughs> We're going to go through an English <laughs> class on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, we need to go over some pronunciation. We're both doing bad. <laughs> like I said, guys, it's going to be rough this couple of episodes until <laughs> so we can you Get gotta, this, yeah, you gotta let us screen. settle in a little bit. It's, it's a little different. I'm not gonna lie. Like it is. Um, it feels. It feels uh like when you hear yourself in a mic. Like we're talking about vulnerability here. Like hearing your voice. I was or... like ready to go. Like and then we started recording, and it's like different. There's like a whole like. Yeah. Uh, it's like that stage. Yeah, it's like yeah, the stage. Factor. It is like stage fright. Yeah. All right, Trey. Let me hit you with a deep question now. How can you improve that vulnerability as an artist in this upcoming year? I think that's that's definitely the million dollar question there. Um, <laughs> We're gonna go right into the. I deep think, stuff. yeah, I think as far as improving vulnerability, it's almost like a self. It's almost like a journey with yourself because I don't think. I don't think you can truly be vulnerable unless you love yourself mm -hmm. because that's essentially what you like you're putting yourself in raw form mm -hmm. out to the world and it's like if you don't love yourself or you know embody this confidence it's really hard to even 
break into that. But I think yeah. as far as improving it, I've been a pretty reserved person my entire life. But I think posting more content on TikTok, and I mean, even this podcast, it's like, mm -hmm. it's almost like speech class. Like, everybody had to take speech in college. Nobody wanted to. I hated that class yeah. so much. My but it's way. like, and, and it's like the stereotypical thing. It's like, you know, when you get in there, the teacher's like, come on, guys. Like, all you got to do is just keep doing it and practice, practice, and it'll be more comfortable. And, like, honestly, it's kind of true because, mm -hmm. like, <laughs> as cheesy as it may sound, by the end of that class, I remember going up to do a speech and it wasn't like, I think a lot of people's fear of public speaking or even being vulnerable is like, they have this perfect image in their head of how they want it to go. Yeah. But then it never turns out that way. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like you're living in the future. Like you're sitting there and you're like conceptualizing this idea over and over and you're like, it's going to go this way. It's going to go this way. And you just start like you getting you start getting anxious, but once you do it, you know a few times and you start doing it, yeah. It's like, I mean, it's cliche, but it's like y you feel more comfortable. Yeah. So I think practice makes perfect. Yeah, right, it's that old thing we've always been told since a kid. Right, and I so I think as far as me like becoming more vulnerable, I think honestly deep down. Just just posting more content, podcast, and then like playing more live shows. Yeah. I think live shows are excuse me. It's weird at first, but like oh, goodness. Once you start taking <laughs> on this persona and you start doing it more and you get comfortable, it's like it just clicks. Yeah. And I remember playing open mic at Champies down the road <sighs> months ago um and it's like something about like I'm so, I'm very nervous like I got stage fright and all that type of stuff but it's like once I get on stage and it's like that first song like if you ask anybody it's like mm -hmm. that first song like once you get past that first song yeah. it's like you feel yeah. you get it out of the way if you do, if you literally do like half effort and it sounds decent, mm -hmm. once that's out there to the crowd, it's like you're you tell yourself your conscience is like okay, these people know you're not an idiot. Yeah. So <laughs> now I actually know what I'm doing up <laughs> <Yeah>. here. <laughs> so now, yeah, because when you walk up there, it's like wow, I could literally just play the wrong note. Yeah. And everybody's like, who is this guy? Right. I feel but like everybody at first when you go up there is like, oh, I can do that. Yeah. And then you go through that first song, and then they're like, all right, maybe I can't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> He's actually you, pretty good. <laughs> yeah, you go through the first song, and it's like, like, wow, this isn't like rocket science. Like, I just mm -hmm. got to play the guitar and You just got to put yourself like, out there. Uh, yeah, like yeah. I'm sitting over here on the couch. Yeah. And it's like, I think that's the biggest thing as far as breaking that threshold is – you got to love yourself, man. And it's so hard because you don't want to be, like, boastful. And you don't want to be, like, large-headed. But yeah. it's, like, this fine line of being humble but also knowing that, like... Like, you're you. Yeah. You're just and confidence you're, in yourself. Yeah, and you're enough, basically. If, if I could go back and change, like, what I said earlier with, like, we've always been told as a kid, like, practice makes perfect, practice makes perfect, practice makes... How many, how many times have you heard that from your peers a lot but like if there's anything i've learned in my 23 years of life is that practice does not make perfect you will never be perfect but what practice does do is provide comfort there is comfort in preparation like in if, you, if you've done live yeah. shows a hundred times that hundred and one time is going to be better than your first time yeah, like that's just because exactly. you're comfortable <laughs> with it and it's the same right. like with content creation <clears throat> and just anything in life the more you do it the more comfortable you are with it and the more comfortable you are your skill set goes up your right. ability to produce goes up yeah. and that just comes with comfort like in your preparation like 
the hundred times you did it before is in preparation for the hundred and first time you do it. Right. And like the worst thing that people ever do is don't ever do it that first time because they're scared. And if you Dude, just put time. that, if you just put that <laughs> down and think of it like, all right, like this might be bad. The first right. one, two, three, I, I might not be good by the twenty fifth time, but all of that is in preparation for the twenty sixth time, the twenty seventh time, and on. Uh, it's content like, creation like just looking back at myself like <clears throat> the first tiktok i ever posted oh my god i wish i i'd go back and delete it <laughs> it's rough <laughs> like and just all of them are rough yeah. up until a point where like you stop trying to please somebody else with your behavior like maybe you you can probably attest to this like maybe the, when you first started like you were trying to please people with your music and now it's like well i just want to make music for me and like with tiktok and content creation for me it's like <laughs> i just want to make content for me like mm -hmm. i'm just comfortable in who i am i can put something out there and not care about it like i will, like the whole purpose and goal is to help somebody and i'm confident in that i yeah. don't care about people's opinions towards it i don't care if they think i'm flopping i don't care like the opinions just don't matter like my opinion matters and right. that's the only one that matters I think that's the big thing with social media too is like and it sounds so crazy but it's so true like a hundred people could comment on like your TikTok or your music and be like yo this is sick like mm -hmm. like I love this and then you got that one that person one or two person. people <laughs> and it's like they talk <laughs> like crap about it or they say something uh -huh. and it's just like it you can't get that you. out of your mind yeah right, exactly. it's like why would some <laughs> yeah because i think it, it at that point it's like you know like why would somebody do this like yeah. and most of the time it's just out of it's really not personal it's just like mm -hmm. i mean i think a lot of people struggle with seeing people do good yeah and being successful because <laughs> I mean, everybody's selfish on a scale because, I mean, you're the only person who's experienced uh, this reality. Human, yeah, yeah, it's just being yeah. you. And so I think that's the barrier you got to get through is just the haters. Yeah, the haters. <laughs> Freak the haters. <laughs> <laughs> Golly. Yeah, I get it. Like, but, yeah. I mean, the biggest thing that bugs me all the time I feel like I've gotten pretty good over the years now in social media in general. Like, at some point, you just numb yourself to it. Yeah. But the still the biggest thing that always bugs me is, like, I'll post something, and I've got such good intentions behind it, right? But then there's that one or two or three couple of people that just, like, are like, well, I don't know why you said it that way. Like, that hurt. Mm -hmm. Like if it if it comes across like I actually genuinely might have hurt a couple of people, like it bothers the fire out of me. Even yeah. though I helped. Like if ninety nine people commented and said that really helped. That was great. Great words. And then one person comments and they're like, I don't know why you said that. Like <laughs> I that hurt. I don't like that. Yeah. And I'm like, Dad you get it. Stuck like, on it. <laughs> Yeah, you get stuck why on Why am it I and... stuck on that? Yeah. <laughs> Like, I helped 99 people, but one person is hurting because of something I said, and that bothers me. Yeah. No, I feel the same way. I, I struggle with that. Like, deep down, I, I don't ever want to hurt anybody, obviously, but, like, I think sometimes with my personality, it comes across, like, mm -hmm. different. Like, I've always thought this, but, like, I feel like if you don't know me very well... Like, mm -hmm. jokes that I would normally make, like, with people that I know really well, like, it wouldn't really, like, you'd be like, what exactly did he mean there? <laughs> you know <laughs> what I'm saying? Thinking about your joke in the yeah. as they're nodding and be like, yeah, that's funny. What? Yeah, what? they're kind of <laughs> like, who is this guy? Like, why, why did he say it that way? And it's yeah. like, I don't know. And I mean, like, I am different, you know, around certain people and I think it's it's really not anything like negative it's just like the people you feel like really comfortable with mm -hmm. you kind of open to more but I think the lesson in it is you you know back to vulnerability like you gotta open up to like everybody 
Yeah. Because it's like, even if, you know, they hurt you or they take you in a negative way, like, you're just being yourself. Yeah. And I mean, that's all the justification you need. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, I mean, as long as you, you know, you're not. the world. As long yeah. as you're comfortable with yourself. Yeah, as long as you're not bringing people and down. It. and <laughs> No matter what you want to do in life, you want to produce music, you want to make TikToks, you want to be a YouTuber, you want to, like, no matter what it is, uh, you be comfortable in your own skin, you take off and you run with it, and who cares what the world has to say about it. Right. Let's, uh, I know it's the middle of the video, first yeah, I episode. Say, I know uh, <laughs> it's just out. episode one, but we've already got a sponsor for today's video, guys. Uh, big shout out to Archangel Clothing Company. They sent us some fire clothing. Uh, I'm over oh, here wearing the realize, hoodie. Huh? Yeah, I didn't even realize that was the Archangel yeah, hoodie. Yeah, it looks like a Marvel logo for real. Uh, I'm, I'm wearing the hoodie. Trey's over there wearing the t-shirt. Uh, how's that t-shirt feel? It, feel t -shirt. it feels good. Yeah? I mean, it That's feels comfortable <laughs> like feels, a good t-shirt uh, yeah it's yeah. Uh, it was weird because like i used to wear so in my bigger days mm -hmm. of being you know 205 at six feet with you know mostly fat <laughs> i had my you know early days of college and you know it's kind of i mean it's hard to take care of yourself when you're yeah. busy and you know, especially college because it's like Man, uh, you got everything out there in the world at your fingers, dude. You got <sighs> college is rough. I mean, yeah. if you're healthy and you're a bodybuilder in college, like respect. you've got Absolute some willpower, respect. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no real. doubt. But yeah, it's kind of lost my train of thought. There, <laughs> <but> <laughs> I think you were gonna say maybe it's good workout clothing. Oh, no, like no, no, that's what maybe it it's yeah, good yeah, to yeah. work out in. Yeah, yeah no, no. I was so, gonna say I worked out in the hoodie the other day, and it makes a fire pump cover. It's actually like really, really soft. Uh, they, it's not, it's not a cheaply made sweatshirt, and that shirt it, looks pretty, pretty good too. But yeah, no, the material's great. Yeah. Like, Anyways, y'all can use PHP get twenty percent off. Get you some help out our sponsor we've already got a sponsor on day one it's wild well, man that is wild. <laughs> big shout out to archangel love you guys but uh yeah we were speaking about vulnerability and everything and just i th i think if you're listening to this or watching this like vulnerability is like if there's a word i wish i could pick out for you for this next year and just attack it it's it's vulnerability like be vulnerable I, I promise you it will be so rewarding um trey your music gets better and better the more vulnerable you get right. content gets better and better the more vulnerable you get vulnerability is key I'm, I'm telling you guys if you're listening or watching like be more <laughs> vulnerable in this next coming year it's gonna be crazy for you i promise It'll help you it's so it's so hard man it's literally like i struggle with vulnerability seeing people be vulnerable you know what i mean yeah, right. like i was yeah, watching yeah. uh so logan paul came out with a video like a few hours ago so that pokemon deck uh -huh. or that box that he bought for 3.2 million bro I, i've seen the money he spends on pokemon it was it's crazy it was a f it was a scam it was so a scam? he yeah he so got look, scammed right yeah so oh he posted this video and it's it, like it blows my mind it's crazy me speaking about like vulnerability he opens up the episode i think he was like doing something or i can't remember what he said but he gets into the video and he's like filming the whole like spill like he's with these yeah. two guys who actually the one of the guys he bought the deck from yeah and then the other guy was some like authenticator or something uh-huh and uh, so long slap the so long this story real. <laughs> so long story short they're all like bummed out and this is all on film and it's yeah. like like imagine paying that kind of money like yeah and you can even take it down to like you know a, a more like universal like realistic level like imagine if you spent like $500 on something that you cherished and you bought it as a collector's item yeah. and then it's like you find out it's fake now imagine if that was all on video uh-huh and then you posted it to youtube and it's just there forever you know what's and crazy though 
Like not not to knock him. Like yeah. all right, he's being vulnerable. Respect right. to yeah. Logan Paul. If you ever see this, that'd be dope. But shout out Impulse. Yeah. We're, we're next sponsor maybe. <laughs> but uh like what's crazy is he probably made all his money back on that video. Yeah. Like him being vulnerable, posting it, probably <clears throat> of course, I mean anything he does goes viral, but his vulnerability probably went viral. His sales went up, everything yeah. went up. Like I again, like vulnerability and is rewarding. I mean, the dude's anything he touches turns to gold, but yeah. just to show you on a basic level, like vulnerability is rewarding. Right. Financially, spiritually, mentally, like all of it. It's it's freeing. Uh, like once you're vulnerable, you just you just don't care anymore. Like, you you begin to accept yourself and you accept who you are. And that's like the whole thing. It yeah. is so hard to get there to completely 100% love yourself because yeah. everybody's going to have down days where they're like, come on, man. Like, yeah. I don't want to do this. Why did I post that? Like, that wasn't good enough. And, like, you know what That's I mean? The daily. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. it's a struggle. But I mean, like, the rewards, I mean, they're there. Yeah. And I mean, you've yeah. kind of experienced that. You've got yeah. absolutely how many followers on TikTok? <laughs> yeah. I've got a small following. Yeah. <laughs> A little hundred. little fan base yeah, there. Yeah. I mean, hey, like, and that's that's honestly like I'm so grateful for it, and that's yeah. com- been completely through vulnerability. Like, and that's the I don't other know why you guys thing. follow me on TikTok. I really <laughs> don't. But <laughs> I appreciate you guys and love you, but uh, like all of it has come from vulnerability. Like, yeah. I don't think, I truly don't believe I would have anything I do now, like today, like. And any of my content creation without having taken that step a couple of years ago of just being vulnerable and posting vulnerable, relatable content. I don't right. think it ever would have happened. So. I think that actually, unless you had something, Nuh-uh. I think that goes into my first question for you. Uh, um, okay. <laughs> don't get too nervous. It's a little <laughs> generic, but so uh, was there like a specific point in time or a day that you finally... Cause I have a day where I woke up, uh-huh. but do you have a, a a point in time or a day where you remember specifically? It was like, wow, like either you know you didn't like where you were, or it was like I really want to change and become better. And like, and I mean, like people can think that every morning when they yeah. wake up, but like, was there a point in time where you actually were like, I'm doing this, and then it was like, yeah, no, absolutely. that shift, I, absolutely. and like, what was that like? It was a uh... I remember um, I was in a small group uh, from my church back when I lived in uh, Mobile. Shout out Mobile, Alabama. But I um, miss you guys. South, <laughs> but, uh, South Alabama. <laughs> right, yeah, I was uh, I was still in school at the time. I was finishing up my last year at South. I got heavily involved in the one of the churches down there, um, City Hope. Uh, joined a small group. And I watched this guy. Uh, his name was Hayden. And... Uh, you talk about vulnerability dude like i've never seen and like he changed my perspective on vulnerability because like Mm -hmm. this is this is like a guy that like i looked up to and was like he is he's a man he you know he he works out it's not like you know he's got everything that's I don't, I don't know the appropriate political term but like (laughs) he's got the masculinity you know like he's a man right uh, works out super buff um super fit just Uh, rolling through his veins but then (laughs) when we'd be in this small group right like there was nothing tough guy about him like just the opposite open soft vulnerable (laughs) oh my god he'd spill his testimony out to you and like his daily struggles like he struggled with suicide and depression and uh medication and just all these things and like he was such he changed my perspective on it like oh wow like He's a, he's a man, and he's also he's a man like he's a greater man because he's a vulnerable man. Right. I'm saying man a lot, but he oh, yeah. he uh he changed my whole perspective on it, and we had a conversation about that that night. And uh, I told him like I've always had like walls up. I've never been a vulnerable person. I've always been to myself, and uh, I was actually <laughs> I remember having a conversation with him about like wanting to do more for people. And uh, being in church and being in small group, I felt like I would grow as a human if I stopped trying to help me and helped others and helping others would help me. 
Mm-hmm. And um, I went home that night and posted uh, a TikTok actually, and like basically spilled out. Like it wasn't even two people; it was literally to myself through a camera. Like, hey, I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling with this. Like, and this is where I want to get to. This is how I want to improve. So, like, you're saying you, like, filmed this? Yeah, like, I literally filmed myself saying, like, what I struggle with and how I planned on fixing it. That's a good idea. And, yeah. like, it, <laughs> dude, like, that that was the first time I could ever look back at my life and say I was vulnerable and open to the world. Like, yeah. this is me. This is Matthew Blaze. This is my daily struggle. Right. And it went absolutely viral. And I got message after message after message of people like confessing back to me what they struggle with on the video and in DMs. Just like. So you did this on TikTok? Yeah. Okay. And because of the viral, I guess, and the emotion in that and people spilling everything back to me. And I mean, I got paragraphs of people sending me like how, like, how that randomly popped up in their day. And it just blew him it away. helped him. <laughs> like there was, I remember there was one guy saying that he he was he's been heavily addicted to medication, and it just popped up in his feed, and it it made him realize I struggle with this. Holy crap! Like yeah, this is a real struggle of mine, and right. I need to do something. And heck, doing something about it never even crossed his mind until he saw that, and it was just like story after story of That's something wild. like that. Yeah, and I was like, holy cow, dude! Like. And that was, like, the first time, like, so, like, just to get a a point of view, like, when you posted that, did you have, like, like, that whole second guess? It was, like, oh, my gosh. It's almost like there's no going back. It's, like, oh, my gosh, like, I did that. Yeah, no, absolutely. I woke (laughs) up the next day, and I was, like, there's a video of, like, everything out there now. Like, it's it's, it's the See, the whole thing about, like, social media like that and your vulnerability is, like, once it's out there, it's out there. Like, it's the best thing no and the back, worst yeah. thing. Like, when you go all in and you put something out there like that, you are burning the ships. <laughs> like, yeah. you can't take it back. And um, it that, like, when I woke up that next day, I remember being like, wow, I can't believe I did that. But, I mean, like, I might as well just keep going forward with it. Like, right. I mean, if I'm going to... I'm going to feel worse about myself and I'm not going to help myself if I try to retract what I did. But instead, yeah, if no, I just go can, yeah. all in and just roll with it and try to help people by being vulnerable, who knows what it'll turn into. And I just remember like that was the first time like I completely just gave it over like to God, honestly. Like my content creation and everything. And like, hey, I'm going to post everything. And I, yeah. we were kind of talking about this before the, we started recording on the podcast, but, like, I feel like one of my best things is, like, I just post everything. Like, you just don't know what you're going to get. And it's because yeah. <laughs> I'm comfortable being vulnerable. Like Comfortable being in your own skin. Yeah. Like, I'm, like, I'm a man of faith. I'm a Christian. I want you to know God. But, like, I struggle every day with my faith, too. Like, and so none of there's not going to ever be a time where like all my social media is nothing but good christian content like that because i'd be such a liar like that'd be so hypocritical like i am a struggling man so i'm going to show you my struggles because like i want to be able to relate to you the best way to help somebody is to be able to relate exactly so i mean yeah it's going into the whole tying of the theme of every this whole podcast is like the vulnerability it's, yeah, it's i rewarding. think that's the that's the theme of the first episode right there yeah, yeah, it's vulnerability. <laughs> i can't tell and you it's how ironic you said that it, word yeah, and it's ironic enough that it's the first the first episode yeah. that we've ever done so it's yeah. i think it fits good yeah well uh let me throw some questions back at you what's some uh it's it's going to be so cliche too <laughs> all right <laughs> <laughs> what what are we'll your get... 2022 new year's resolutions <laughs> <laughs> i know you've been hitting the gym dog is that yeah uh, there's got to be some fitness goals you got yeah so my fitness goals so dude my timeline is so messed up like with with like because i went to two different colleges you know junior mm-hmm. college and then una and it's like i don't really remember the years mm-hmm. like i can't just be like oh yeah 2020 or, or 2018 i was like doing this it's like i kind of have to really think about it but yeah. as far as fitness I, dude i used to be 
trying to think of when that was. I think it was. I think it was May of twenty nineteen, mm-hmm. and <clears throat> I was partying. I was drinking a lot, mainly beer, and mm-hmm. getting all those carbs. <laughs> oh, dude, I was building a little fanny pack, uh-huh. and I just got to the point where. I literally, like, back to the question I asked you, I, w- I woke up one day, and I was putting my jeans on, the same jeans that I have over there in that room, mm-hmm. and it was like, they barely fit, and I looked at myself in the mirror, and I was just like... <laughs> <laughs> this was your realization moment? <laughs> I was like, what? I was like, dude, how, like, how did it get to this? Yeah. And, it, I mean, it just happens. Yeah. It's just like, so... It's the same thing when they say, uh, like when you're starting off working out, like if you go look in your mirror after day one, you won't see anything. Day exactly. three, you won't see anything. Day seven, you won't see anything. Day 14, you might not see anything. Yeah. But eventually you're going to start so seeing slow. something. It's so slow. And it works in the exact opposite of like when you have bad habits in your life, like yeah. drinking and more. Yeah. Day one, yeah, you won't you're see not You're not going <laughs> to notice it until it's too late and it's All already right. happening and you're yeah. like, dang. Yeah, that's... I mean that's that's kind of the boat I was in. Like I I woke up that day and I I was putting my jeans on and it was literally as simple as that. I threw my jeans on and I was like, wow, like mm-hmm. something's got to change. <laughs> I gotta fix this. So that was kind of the start of my fitness journey. And I'll tell you what, I started out like, and I'll actually like tell people to do this now if they are like not physically in shape or maybe they're new to like exercising and working out and they don't know a whole lot about it. I started out doing like body weight stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I, <laughs> that day I was like, all right, something's got to change. So I, I hit up one of my buddies and was asking him about protein and you know, when, how much and how, yeah. you know, when I should take it. And I just started doing like, just body weight stuff like I would go downstairs we had weights and stuff but I was kind of in that stage where I didn't just want to like dive right into it and just destroy my body because I mean if you if you've never worked out in your life or you've spent this long break like once you go back into it it's like you shock your body you wake up the next day and not even the next day the next Mm -hmm. two days yeah it's like oh my gosh I can't even lift this box Mm -hmm. so I kind of started out in the body weight arena I guess you could say yeah. <clears throat> and I was doing push-ups like body squats I yeah. mean it was so simple dude and it started it really just takes like you have to it's very slow like you were saying so you have to build upon each day yeah you and have you have to enjoy yeah you have to enjoy the journey mm-hmm because if you don't enjoy the journey, you're never going to get to the destination. Yeah. And that's kind of the whole thing with life and, like, what people have preached is, like, and if you think about it, like, something as simple as a video game. Mm-hmm. Like, once you beat a video game, it's like, okay, what now? Yeah. But you it's ever like. Hear, uh, I don't mean to interrupt. No, you're Have good. you ever Go heard ahead. of Kobe Bryant's speech on that? Like, on it was, what? like, his retirement speech. Oh, it was so good. It was a. When he retired, oh, the he journey. gave the retirement. Yeah. yeah, about the journey. He was like, you know, I've always been told, or I always thought the dream was, you know, leaving basketball, leaving that legacy behind and that impact on the youth and being done with it. And yeah. the ending was the strive. Like, that's what you're going for, to right. leave that impact the behind you. The finish <laughs> the line. Finish yeah. line. <laughs> and he was like, now that I've finished, I realized that it was the journey that was the prize. Like, the 5 a.m. workouts was the prize. The grinding my tail off 24-7 to be better yeah. the next day, that was the prize. The ending is not the prize. It's when you're it's, in it. Yeah, dude, it's so – and it's so hard to see. And it's like – I mean, nostalgia proves that because it's like – speaking of nostalgia, dude, I <laughs> did you ever play SSX Tricky? No, I can't say I have. No. Oh, my gosh, dude. If anybody's watching this that's played that, they'll know, but – Dude, SSX Tricky might be one of the greatest games ever. Yeah. And, like, you know, I could dive into it, but it's, like, once you, 
like today, I was watching these videos of the game. And I'm not even kidding you. It like put me back Mm -hmm. into how I thought as a child. Like I felt like I was a child again. Like Uh it wasn't like I thought about it. I literally was watching the video and I was like imagining myself playing that game when I was a child. And it's Mm -hmm. like, I think that kind of proves the whole concept because it's like, you know, like, okay, I maybe finished the game or like new games come out, but it's mm-hmm. like that whole experience and mm-hmm. like life, it's all about, it's hard to see in the moment. And I think there's yeah. something to that that we can't really grasp. But once you've seen the full picture and mm-hmm. you've seen the progress, the dedication, and it's not even the end goal that satisfies you. It's like, yeah. wow, like I did all these things. That took so much work. Yeah. And like, dude, Kobe was probably... There's no. T- I mean, I think he was probably he probably has some of the highest work ethic of oh, any yeah. human that's Absolutely. ever lived. Nobody worked as hard as he did. I mean, I, I don't know how it didn't kill him. Like literally, honestly, like <laughs> the stories you'd hear about him and his work ethic I mean, was being just in the stupid. gym for <laughs> for like eighteen hours straight uh, yeah. just to prove a point to somebody else that they weren't going to be in there longer than him. And I take that back to fitness, though. Like with our own personal fitness journey, like I think about the whole reason I'm in fitness, right? Is to have a longer life and a healthier life. Like when I'm 50 years old, be a very healthy 50 year old. When I'm 60, be a very healthy 60 year old. But I know I'm going to look back on it one day, like trying to think forward and putting myself in that moment. Like when I am 50 and when I am 60 and I am healthy, like I wanted to be Yeah. right now is what I'm going to miss. When I was 20-something, 30-something, yeah. like, lifting heavy weights, like, going crazy. Yeah. Like, actually grinding <laughs> to, like, the grind to be that healthy 50-year-old, I'm going to miss the grind. Like, right. I'm not going to make it to 50 it. and yeah. be like, wow, like, this was so <laughs> worth it. This is great. I mean, it is, but I'm going to miss the oh, previous yeah, part, yeah. like, the journey, the yeah. road to get there. That's, that's, and that's anything. I mean, that's your grind with music. That's grind with content creation. That's any, like, you're going... Yeah. Like, enjoy the grind. Enjoy the journey. Enjoy the hard times, the hard work. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing you can take from people who've kind of done it. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, at the same time, it's like you look at them and you're like, you know, dang, man, like, I wish. I mean, like, all these people that are, like, retired, it's like, what do they do? Like, these Mm -hmm. famous people, it's like, you know that they are literally at a point in their life where they don't have to do any, like, right. not a single, they could literally just sit on their couch for the rest of their life and watch nothing. TV. And it wouldn't affect their legacy and it wouldn't affect them yeah. because it's like they've they've made it. But they they have to keep working. Right. Like they miss they miss it so much that they have to do something. I, so if you if people who are listening don't know, but I work <laughs> at a sales job in a, at a dealership, yeah. and they make us watch Grant Cordone videos. You know who Grant Cordone is? The, I can't say that I do. Okay, he's a, like a big time YouTube salesman. He's a billionaire. Owns, I, uh, he claim I, I haven't ever fact checked him, but he claims he owns like fifty uh, fifty businesses, like <laughs> separate businesses. Yeah. And um, but we they bought his like sales program to watch a bunch of videos for him, right? And um, I just remember like one of the things he says repetitively and it's not like he said it once or twice repetitively for a year or two like i've watched a video where he was like younger and i he's always said it like ever since i think he became a billionaire like it's great he loves it obviously that's what he worked to become he worked to become that billionaire but he always says in all of his videos like if i could go back i really wish i was that (laughs) 20 year old salesman just starting out again like i miss that whole grind i miss the journey because now that you're here it's like it, it's hard to it's like what now like <laughs> yeah it's hard to not be satisfied in right. a way i mean you hear people say that all the time like that are very successful in life mm-hmm. kobe grant and everybody else that's just like you would look at them and you say they made it they're like i if i could go back i'd start the whole journey over again like yeah they miss the journey so like if you're listening or watching and you're in the middle of that journey like don't lose sight on what you're in like 
this is the fun part. <laughs> All right. As weird as that is to say, like the it's grind so to make it to yeah. where you want to get, that is the fun part. It's so true. yeah, s- sometimes you just gotta <laughs> stop and enjoy it and soak it in for a sec and realize how far you've come already. I think that's kind of the thing with um, meditation. Mm-hmm. Is you were telling me about this a little bit. Dive into it. I you yeah. you're big. You, as far as I understand, you're bigger into it. I've tried <laughs> to tiptoe into it. And yeah. So, it's, but you you seem more knowledgeable. It's so. a weird thing, man, and I'm kind of like a conspiracy guy. Not saying that like I believe everything that's out there, but like mm-hmm. it's hard. Or I'll say this: it's easy to convince me of something mm-hmm. with like reasonable evidence. Yeah, because I'm like I'm like a very like are you dreamer. a gullible person? <laughs> I'm pre. <laughs> I'm pretty gullible. Well, I don't know. It's such a weird thing because, uh-huh. like, I'm not, like, that gullible. But every time I watch something that's, like, well done as far as a conspiracy or anything like that, and there's, like, reasonable evidence, it's mm-hmm. like, wow. Like, I don't want to miss out on this. Like, yeah. I kind of – I'm buying into this because yeah. it's, like, I feel like this may be true. And you're talking – are you – you're not talking about like 9/11 conspiracies. You're talking about no. like more to do with like the mental mindset. Yeah. yeah. So well, the point is for for this conversation, like meditation is it was very easy for me to get into. Is kind of what I'm trying to say because I'm like very mm-hmm. open to a lot of ideas. Yeah. And so I think the biggest thing with meditation it's like it's like people hear it or they think about it and they're like oh well you know i don't want to be like some monk yeah or like (laughs) something like that but like if you think about it in a you kind of have to change your perspective on it because like i was telling telling you earlier or last week or whenever it was all all it really is is in a time when we're so we're moving so fast and mm-hmm. I, I mean I think a lot of anxiety is coming from how fast paced we live. Yeah. And when you have something like that that's just bombarding you every day, it really and they actually have scientific like evidence of mm-hmm. meditation like kind of altering your brain waves yeah. and like how you think. Yeah. Because you're taking a moment, and honestly, if we could get sponsored by these people, that'd be sick. But <laughs> <laughs> if uh, have you ever seen Guide, or it's called Headspace Guide yeah, to yeah, yeah. on Netflix? I have seen that. Yeah, dude, if you do the meditation video, it's like ten minutes, uh-huh. and it's so easy because the guy like literally just walks you through it, and his yeah. voice is so pleasing to listen to. Gotcha. And it's just like ten minutes. It's literally ten minutes of sitting down. I'm going to try to like word this as best I can. Like whenever we're living our lives, we're always looking forward to like what we're about to do. Yeah. And when you're meditating, it's like you completely stop. You completely let go. Mm -hmm. You completely give in to everything. And you just stop. And I mean, a lot of breathing techniques help, but you're basically just sitting there and like, it's like it's almost like a regeneration yeah. thing like and when like after it's over you feel so like once you take your mind it's like very euphoric huh oh dude you you stop your mind and i mean it takes practice like yeah. you're not going to experience I, this I'm the sure first it's time it's like super hard in the beginning to like yeah. actually slow your mind down like that yeah cuz we're so tra- like you said we're so trained now to like be fast at everything and to the point that our brains <laughs> never slow down <laughs> Exactly, dude. So, like, telling your brain to do exactly what it doesn't want to do seems like a hard process to get right. into. You kind of... That's the that's the cool thing, too, about meditation. You kind of have to figure it out for yourself. Mm-hmm. Like, you can take all the steps and all the tools, but the thing about it is you kind of... Like, you have to be one with yourself, yeah. and you have to tell yourself, I'm going to, for 10 minutes stop thinking about everything and just like it's almost like you're going to sleep while you're awake Mm -hmm. 
and it's it just does Ooh, something that's, to that's you. That's good. That's good. It's like, yeah. it's kind of like um, when people talk about like highway hypnosis. Yeah. Like how they, they it's almost like they're sleeping. Yeah, driving. they're just yeah. like. When you drive and somewhere <laughs> and you get there and you're like, how the heck did I get here? Yeah. There's been so many times I drive home and I just pull into the driveway. I'm like, <laughs> I don't remember that drive at all. What in the world text, did I text just do? Paragraphs yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't text and drive. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. All right, quick rapid fire as we wrap up this podcast. Three right. characteristics you want to work on or have at the end of this year. As in, like, give me an example. Like, if you want to improve your vulnerability, or like, vulnerability isn't something you have and you want it at the end of the year. What are three characteristics you want to work okay. on? Or if you don't have them, you want them by the end of the year. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'd say one's vulnerability for sure. Um. I think two would probably be. I don't know. It's a tough one because like. I mean, everybody struggles with motivation. Yeah. And I, f- I feel like I've been working on it pretty well. Uh-huh. But, I, I mean, I'd say staying motivated. Mm-hmm. And you really have to find something. I mean, kind of back to the journey thing. Like, I wake up every day looking forward to the gym uh-huh. because I love just being in there yeah. and, like, working out. It uh-huh. feels good. Yeah. And so I think finding multiple things that motivate me to do those certain things that I want to do. Yeah. It's probably number two. And then I'd say number three. Something quick. (sighs) Probably, (laughs) probably like I want to be more expressive and loving. Ooh. I guess. Good. uh, Yeah. And you don't think about it a lot, but like, I mean, just just simple things that don't take a whole lot of time. Yeah. Like just telling somebody you love them. And I mean, Facts. Facts. Will Smith is a great guy to look up videos about. Oh yeah, stuff like that. But so, what about you? That's awesome. <laughs> uh, mine's gonna be quick fire. A quick fire dedication. <laughs> uh, How's just dedicated. Like I'm a highly motivated person, but sometimes I lack on the dedication part. Um. Like going through, like actually it. sticking to a routine. Yeah. Like I'm a routine person, and when I break the routine, I shatter the freak out of it. Like yeah. it's that thing where, like, if I don't get up in the morning at six a.m. to go to the gym before work, like I'm lazy at work. I'm lazy about my meals. Yeah, like I'm like my whole day falls <laughs> apart. Yeah. So like, winning the morning with dedication. Yeah. Um. Uh vulnerability i think is just like the word of the episode right now yeah, like it's the whole thing just continue to be vulnerable <laughs> through this year and uh three i think honestly for me is going to be forgiveness i i yeah that's a good i one. will fully admit i am not a very good forgiving person <laughs> that's actually you, really good like, i don't let things go and i i dislike that about myself and i want to become a more I'm the same way, person for sure. But uh, thank you guys for listening in and tuning in. Uh, this is episode one. Uh, comment, send the us birth. DMs. DM <laughs> Trey. Uh, Moon, you can find him Trey Moon on Instagram. Yeah, I think it's um, it's one Trey Moon. Trey Moon, right? I think it's one Trey Moon, something like that. <laughs> one Trey Moon. Okay. There's a Trey DM Moon out on there Instagram. That... <laughs> uh, mine's Matt uh, Matty B on all my social platforms. DM us. Tell us how we did. Uh, comment below. Do you, let us know how we did. Comment critique us we're trying to learn uh, and grow in this as we go along as the year goes on this is one of the things we want to work on and we want to get better at it so uh, your constructive criticism not hatred <laughs> would be much appreciated <laughs> uh, just remember guys if you're comfortable you're not growing y'all have a great night take care peace